really it's um i don't know like a compendium or a you know collection of interviews that i um gathered over the last few years really with um certain sort of characters who i managed to there was <laughs> there were quite a few criteria on on, on how I, I i came across these characters some of them obviously i went for people that i, I really admired or inspired um, some of them, you know, it was down, a lot of it was down to who I could get in touch with and get hold of and who would support me and help me. Um, but essentially it's, it's these people, I think they're about 21, I think, 21, 22, maybe interviews of people who, um, I feel have got some interest, um, in, in what they say. They've been inspirational, I guess, to me. And, um, obviously a lot of them have been very, high achievers um but it's not always about the achievements necessarily and I think I've done a lot of sport interviews but there have been quite a lot that have gone outside of sport in terms of you know interviewing my physio Alison for instance and uh, an eye surgeon and you know some chefs um that I've really been interested in and I'm really interested to see what their working methods are and how it compares to to what I've done I guess and um I just think that it, it just interests me to see people in other areas and and obviously it interests me to hear what other sports people do and how they go about their days and how they cope with success and difficulty and failure and all this sort of business. And um, yeah, so so I think that's essentially that's it. It's, it's a collection of interviews that sort of interrogates some of these people and what they do. And, and hopefully there's, there's this stuff in there that, that, that becomes interesting and um, some of it will pro probably be more interesting than other bits, but um, some of it might be repeating stuff, but hopefully it nails down a few points and gives an insight into their worlds, really. Yeah, I mean, obviously that, that sort of diary format with the autobiography, it wasn't an autobiography quite, but it was it was it had elements of that and it was all very personal and it was kind of my story, I guess. This this is, I knew, obviously, I love writing, you know, I just love writing and I've, I've done a degree, you know, I've gone to university and studied it, so I know I want to write, but um this kind of follow-up I guess was was an idea I had pretty quickly after shot on a ghost but it takes so bloody so long to do um but um yeah I just think it, this was sort of an, the opposite really this was asking other people what what goes into their worlds and and just 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 those conversations I think when you get two people together um that have been to those depths or have experienced interesting things I think that's quite an interesting sort of alchemy and um you know I love I love that sort of interview thing where whether it's on a radio or a podcast or you know I think a lot of people enjoy that where you've got two people who've been in different areas or you know sort of coming together and trying to analyze and look at and reflect on what 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 they've both done in their time so yeah it was a totally different thing to the to the diary format of the other one um and I guess um I, you know, a bit more sort of interview style, maybe a bit more, I don't know whether the word for, is formal, because I hope I hope it brings out some emotion and stuff like Shot and a Ghost did, but, um, you know, it's perhaps more about these other people, I think, um, and with a little bit of me, because I can't help myself, but, um, yeah, hopefully pretty different, I think, anyway. You know, I want to, it, it's obviously great to get some names. I mean, you know, there's no point in denying that, you know, if you get those names and those people will draw readers in and that helps, but they weren't all just done because of their names. You know, these people have been incredibly, you know, sort of era defining people, I guess, if you like. And we all know about the Johnny Wilkinson uh, World Cup and those are sort of iconic and in just just you can't scrub those images of, of him kicking that ball and I was I was pretty young at that time um you know Jess Ennis at the Olympics they're all just such iconic times and images aren't they that we've all we all remember in in this recent sport in history so they, it was great to get those people to speak to me and they were they were so lovely and I can't I can't thank them enough for what they did and gave to me and the time they gave um you know and uh, but you know I hope it was it was a balance really of of trying to find those people and and also but making sure that it was true and it was that, that they had really inspired me I didn't want to just get them because they were famous these people had been you know had really sort of you know moved me in some way um and obviously there are a lot of people in there that aren't, that aren't as famous um that have in just in squash I mean I could do a whole book on squash of, of these interviews and that would be a great project to do as well but 
you know, I needed, I wanted it to come outside of squash a little, really. So, um, obviously, I did Rami and and Jonah, uh, which were just, which, which was tremendous, and hopefully that'll cover the squash squash fans a little bit. But, but it was just about trying to find a range. I think I just, I just wanted a range, and it was lovely to get those very famous people. But it was, it was just a nice range of people and um, and experiences, really, and that's that's what I was looking for. Yeah, I mean, I think that's it. I think I think it. What there were a lot of common themes, and. I, you know, I think maybe when I've, I've read read it a lot and worked on it a lot, and I sometimes think, have I sort of repeated some of these things a bit much? And and maybe maybe that might come out, and people might criticise it for that, because there are there are bits in it where you know certain themes come up, and I really just try and you know really na- you know talk about them and, and get into the nitty gritty of those those themes because they're then they, they do they will come up a lot, and obviously there are certain principles about achieving and and getting good at something where you, you, you know we all know that hard work works and certain things certain patterns that all these people have so they did they would come up a lot um, and but hopefully I've not you know hopefully they're I'm pretty sure each one of them gives gives you a different slant on it and they diff, and even if they are saying the same thing sometimes I think they they tell you in a different way or and the, my, some of my favorite times were where they would sort of tell me a, just a story about what happened to them and give it give it to me in sort of story terms rather than facts and those are the great bits um just just re- reliving some of the experiences they'd had and and yes they would often refer to the the exact point that someone else had made but hopefully they were sort of bringing their own experience to it as well so yeah there, there were a lot there's probably a bit of repetition i guess but so many different points that were made by them all as well and so many unique and interesting points that each gave so yeah, I mean, it's it's a, that's a good question. I don't know, I don't know really how. You know, I'm sure there there are, unquestionably there are lots of similarities, um, and I think some of the surprising maybe the I think obviously the sports people have all got very similar attributes in the fact that they can take on an awful lot of pain, for instance, and get themselves up to train and push themselves and feel fatigue and pain every day of their lives. And that sort of stuff keeps coming up and coming up. And um, But I think some of the really interesting bits were maybe when I interviewed some of the actors and um, some or, or, or the writers, and you would get these really interesting comparisons. And I guess that's maybe what I was looking for a little bit. Um, but just as one example, you know, the Alexander Hansen interview, um, there was a, I, I felt like there was a really interesting bit in there where he came up with sort of talking about the subconscious as an actor. He's sort of trying and trying and pushing and pushing to sort of find the right scene or the right line or, you know, and it just wasn't working and it wasn't working. And he sort of described this to me and um you know just he would he would almost push himself to work harder when he was in that rut um so he's you know he's learning his lines more he's working harder and he's pushing himself pushing himself and something was kind of blocking him and uh and then he sort of let go of all that and took time away and so almost kind of gave up and it what he said was it sort of allowed his subconscious to kind of come in and I think that was one of my favorite bits of the book almost because it was it really really related to, I've known that feeling so well as a squash player and you're training so hard and you're pushing yourself and I think squash players and I've seen it all around the tour all the players a lot of them really push themselves so hard the the, the, the amount of work some of these guys are putting in to, to get to the very best of their ability is unbelievable and so driven and sometimes it just I know and it's taken me a long time to learn this but sometimes you just need to not let not keep working almost and I'm sure we can all apply this to what we do like we sometimes push and push and push for something but we sometimes just need to take our foot off the gas and then we can find a a way through it and that was that was great so that that was kind of an example really of where um you know and I've mentioned it before where it just that really struck a big chord and and I hope that there are some examples that maybe all sorts of people can read stuff like what Alex has said there and just go wow that's that's interesting and I could use that in in my world a little bit to, to try and make myself a bit better I mean I think that there, if I went through it again and there, there are loads of times where you know I'm not, I'm not sort of bigging it up too much people decide this for themselves obviously when they're if they read it but 
Um, I felt like even when I'd read through it several times, I kept getting little bits. So I think there are loads of bits in there where I'm like, oh yeah, that's so good. No, I'll, I'll, I need to use that more. I think one, you know, Johnny Wilkinson, for instance, talked a lot about his, the visualization he used. And I think I've started, I mean, I did the interview quite a while ago now. So it really helped me in the last few years of my career to take on board his specific, really specific way of using visualization in terms of psychology for squash and sport. And, you know, his, his ideas and what he said was, gave me another layer of, I mean, I knew about visualization and psychology, but it just the way he explained it and talked about it gave me another layer of it. And it was almost a lesson really. And, um, you know, the way he talked about, you know, if he's training on a bike, if he's training a little bit less specifically, you know, so off, off the rugby field, he's on a bike, but he's actually making it very specific to the rugby. So while he's doing the interval session on the bike, he's actually imagining the rugby field and the tackles that are made and the, the next play and who he's going to pass to. He's not, and a lot of athletes, I've seen it again, and I've done it myself so many times where I've just gone on a bike and gone through the motions and done a hard session. That, that's fine. But he was sort of taking it to that level of, I want to make this as specific as I can. So I'm going on the bike, but this is going to this is going to be about me improving at rugby. Um, so that there's there's that's just one of those those sort of um, I think examples of maybe what you're saying. And there were loads, there were loads where I would go. That that's such a great point. I'm going to take that on board, and I'm going to think about that. Stefan Edberg said a lot of stuff about match play, for instance, how he used match play more than practice, certainly towards the end of his career. And I. I totally see that. And I think that's really valid what he was saying. So yeah, these points come up that, um, yeah, no question that, that it's helped me to change what I do or, or, or just adapt what I do. No question at all. I think I'm starting building the interviews up maybe six, six, seven years ago. Um, as I said, I was, I'd written the, the book, the, the first book and I was, I love writing. I love you know love writing books, and it, that that seemed to go well with people, and it got nominated for an award and all this business. And um, so it, it gave me a bit of impetus, but I wanted to sort of get on get onto the next one and do another really. But it was I, I found that it was a real something that was exciting to me to to interview these people and get all these ideas. <laughs> in, in reality, it was much harder work because. Not, not in, in many respects, it was great work. I loved it, but the, you can sit at a desk and you can get your books out or you can go online and you can do all your research and you can write your book. But with this one, I had to, there was so much more involved in terms of I had to ring these people or contact them and, and then get hold of their agents and, you know, when they were really famous and, uh, and this sort of, and that's that I said sort of in the introduction bit, that's not, that was not very easy for me. I'm, not it doesn't come that easy anyway and it's just not easy you can't get in touch with these people that easy so um it took time i would i would get the interview and then it, it and then it takes time to transcribe the interview and get it all done and then i wanted to add my own bits so it's been a time consuming business but it, i think i couldn't until i had all the interviews done that's that's taken me a long time just to you know to get in touch with people go and meet them get the interviews done so um yeah it's been a bit of a long process but i'll try and make the next one a bit quicker crikey yeah yeah i mean i think for, for one thing it gave me a little bit of time to I, I, you know in the summer it, it, it allowed me to just um have another go at getting people interested in the book and writing to publishers again and and that was where the interest came from pitch publishing and um it gave me that space to do it and it's been a lovely thing I mean I love I love writing and if the book's no good it's no good but I, I, I've enjoyed it and it's it's I felt like it's helped me anyway and it's worthwhile and it's you know writing it hopefully people at this point in 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 history maybe take a bit of uh, solace out of reading books and watching tv and film and it's, it's helping us isn't it it's helping us all so um I feel quite lucky really that I have got a passion and um that I've interviewed such generous people and I've got to know some of them which has been lovely and uh, just feel very lucky to, to be able to do something like this and you know if, if it gives a few people something then that's that's good. Uh, not really I mean I think on the on the uni course we, it was a lot of fiction really and a lot of plays and writing you know which is 
something I'm really interested in and you know, I've talked about my love of drama and stuff and uh, live, live theatre and things like that. So um, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm having a little go at writing something for children and uh, pottering around when I've got a little bit of spare time. Um, obviously having kids has changed that a bit and given me a bit of an insight into children's literature. So that, that's nice to have a go at that. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I'll, I don't think, I'm not sure, I'm not sure more sports books, probably the answer. Maybe, maybe I'll try and do something, uh, you know, a bit fictional, maybe and have a go, at, see if anyone's interested in that, but just enjoyable. It's just something I enjoy. So I'll keep doing it.